Today I'm showing my solar panel setup. It is a grid down power system, entirely independent of the electrical grid uh, from the power company. This operates independently, totally. Before you have anything done, make sure you consult a qualified electrician. You are doing voltage and current, and you need to have everything properly grounded and installed by a proper electrician. I have four panels on the left and four panels on the right hooked up in series. These are the Alt T 100 12M solar panels. There are 100 watt each. There are eight of them. The four on the left are wired up in series and the four on the right are wired up in series. And those systems are parallel to each other, giving me 60 volts. You can figure, uh, 15 volts per panel times 4 which is 60 and in parallel 60 more so that doubles the current by making it in parallel so instead of 5.5 amps I have 11 amps with a total combined power of uh, 800 watts now the panels are on a, the panels were designed to be on a mobile unit and there are hinges on each place but I'm at 37 degrees north latitude so you should be able to raise and lower the panels up to compensate for winter and summertime usage I end up not doing this because it wasn't worth it the solar panels I have are highly efficient then I used a charge controller, the Midnight Classic, which is also highly efficient for a low light day power setup. I'm at 37 degrees north latitude, so the sun barely comes across the top of the mountain, especially in the winter time. Across the low level, I have sunlight hours from 9 a.m about 2 p.m. Prior to that you have low level light and uh, uh, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon the solar panels are in the shade. But the panels are very efficient and they do pick up quite a bit of uh, electricity even on cloudy days. So anyway each panel produces between 14 and 17 volts and 5.5 uh, amps so on average, about 15 volts per panel. And then, uh, uh, of course I said they were wired up in series parallel. So anyway, they're all grounded. There's a common ground wire that comes down through the system and through the conduit and into the solar panel house. So here is where I direct all the power. Solar batteries do not like, are like human beings. They like it not too hot, not too cold. But anyway, the uh, power from solar panels comes in on this line here. And it goes to a quick disconnect. And uh, so if the panels have to be worked on, just grab the thing and pull it out and you separate the system. Notice that there's a ground wire on each one of these. So the system's properly grounded. Everything has a ground wire. You follow the ground wire down. So no matter what happens, if you have a there's my ground rod. There's my power going out to the house. Everything goes underground. So anyway, I've got at least 60 volts. And 11 amps coming into this panel box here. Now out of that, they come into the charge controller, which I've chosen the Midnight Classic, which is the MPPT. Midnight solar charge 
and it is the regulator that uh, manages the power coming in from the solar panels to the batteries. And uh, let's see if I can give a... Here we have today was in float because we got full sun going on. We have... Uh, so it's not charging any because there's too much power coming in. It, uh, the battery's already fully charged. 13.8 volts, two, three amps. Now that comes out into the breaker box. This is the breaker box for disconnect. That sends power out of the main cable. Now there's your main cable going down into the house. Then once it goes into the house, it comes up inside. There it is. That's your main cable. Go into a 12 volt circuit panel box, which distributes it to the rest of the house. Now, the solar batteries. I went with lead acid batteries. I chose the GC2XHCS deep cycle marine batteries commonly used in my area for trolling motors on bass boats and golf carts. First thing you want to do on safety on it as well as electrical, charging batteries, lead acid produces hydrogen gas. So I created a shell out of a clear tote and I vent the hydrogen gas out and then it goes out through the roof on the side of the house. So while the batteries are charging, any hydrogen gas gets evacuated out that way. Now, if anything escapes, and in this building, I have the exhaust fan. Now, the exhaust fan can run off of the solar power in the wintertime or summer, usually summer. That's the solar power. But usually I plug it into the grid power for normal usage to not use my battery power up. Now the door is also vented, which allows the uh, air to be pulled in. So you don't have any trapped gases inside the building. No hydrogen gas buildup. Okay. Now the batteries are six volt batteries and they are wired up in series parallel as well. So you have two batteries, positive and negative, um, positive to negative. Let's see here if we can get this correct now. Here's my negative line right there. And then here's my positive line. And uh, they feed into the main fuse panel, which is about a 150 amp uh, fuse plug. Now, as your safety, in case uh, they were to short out, that burned that into first. Now, the six volt six batteries are uh, two six volt, make 12 volt, and they're in parallel. So I have 200 and let's see, I don't want to get this right. Uh, 260 amp hour batteries. So those batteries provide voltage to this device here, which comes out of it and into my distribution box where I have a disconnect and then on into the house. And that's my main 12 volt supply to the house. And that 12 volt supply will supply uh, three, uh, three iPhone charging stations, as well as five of these lights. Uh, the lights I use are the RV lights, like this one right here. And they can be on uh, 50% charge or full charge. There's one in the bathroom, the living room, the mudroom, 
and the kitchen as well one bedroom. And now here I have an emergency light in case I need to work on the unit at night and it runs off the battery. So that's our 12 volt system going into the house. Now, right now we're on float, but when it's charging up, it can be under bulk. Now, right now we're showing 81 volts coming in and uh, what was it uh, 500 watts? 0.5 kilowatt, which would be 500 watts. And so it's not accepting any charge now because it's already fully charged. I chose the Midnight Classic because it, costs, it can handle up to 150 volts up to 96 amps. Well, the most I have is 60 volts or up to 80 volts. And the most I would have would be uh, 12 to 15 amps. So anyway, that's the charge controller. Now, once I come out of the batteries, and I supply the main current to the 1000 watt inverter, the Samplex. Now this is a pure sine wave inverter, which I chose because it has, it can operate your laptop computer and uh, your router and uh, with a pure sine wave, which is what uh, most of your delicate devi uh, electronic devices require. So out of that, I have two outlets coming. On one outlet, I had the red outlet to the fireplace and the TV and set top box. The other one is the router to the TV cable, uh, with the fiber optic cable, and the router upstairs, which gives me my internet. Now, while I'm in here, each one of these outlets, the red outlet is for solar power. The plain outlet is my grid power, which I use. And I have two of those in here, again, so I can plug my batteries into the solar power and thereby charge up my, my electric weed eater, electric chainsaw, and later on electric one more. Now I have space here for the next one on one side and then one on the other side. And now these are fully on charge. Now they're, they're not charging right now because they're already fully charged. But I can actually plug those down there. Uh, the purpose of having the solar charger uh, is because I'm using electricity from the solar power in the summertime. Now here again, we're on to the temperature inside the room. This little building can get hot, especially heat from the batteries. And in summertime, we're up to about 75 degrees. So we need this thing here to stay cool. And the way I accomplish that is that the exhaust fan is on a thermostat controlled. So once it hits about 80, that fan will kick on and pull the air out of the building. Now in the winter time, I have exactly the opposite problem. The, uh, the little building get too hot. So I have an electric heater, which is plugged into the grid power, because you can't run a uh, heating element off of solar batteries. They will not handle that. But they'll keep this building warm most of the time. And when the power does go off, then I resort to a heat lamp or a heat lamp bulb which runs off of uh, the solar power. Now you can light a candle in here, but that's kind of iffy because then you're running uh, the hydrogen gas problem. So anyway, once we come out of here, the two lines come out. They also run underground and they run to the house to their particular outlets. Let's see where I go under at. Right there, where those two go underground, and they come up to their special outlet. Two outlets on each line. Now the solar power. The main purpose of having solar power is to run the blower motor on the fireplace. That's the critical part that I really have to have the solar power for. The blower on the fireplace insert with a cold wood fire on a frigid cold winter day 
will blow the heat out into the living area. Otherwise, most heat goes up the chimney. But uh, with the fireplace going, with the blower motors going, that's your main source. This system here will operate that blower motor for anywhere from five to six days, which is generally enough to get me out of the uh, grid down system. The power, well, by then the power will be back on. But anyway, there's my solar panel setup. Now, right now it's showing float, but it also can show bulk and uh, charging. Whoop, it just, it's still, it's still, it's still setting up. And uh, what they call resting. Now, you can actually run everything. Uh, if you go in and check out the, check out the iPhone charger, it shows uh, a series of light, red lights, yellow lights, and green lights. There's five, five, and five. If you're running off the uh, the green lights, then you are running pure solar power on wherever you're running in the house at the time. And if you're running on the uh, yellow lights, you're running off the battery power. Now, once all five lights drop off to uh, to just red. Then you're running off pure battery power, store power, which you have. And if you go on to YouTube and you type in Tin Hat Ranch, he is much better explaining how you're able to spend your uh, solar power you have uh, stored back. So I avoid getting into the red whenever possible. And then, uh, of course, once you get inside, you have your Mercy radio, your 12 volt DVD player and your uh, 12 volt radios, as well as the lights that run off the 12 volts RV lights throughout the house. Anyway, that is my solar power system. Have a nice day.